Today we will be using arpeggiators and velocity effects in Ableton to Live to create realistic sounding guitars. Take a listen to what we will be creating. To create a realistic sounding guitar, we of course need our guitar sound here and um, second we need some notes that the guitar is going to be playing. So um, to um, know which notes we have to draw in here, uh, we have to make, um, we have to think about how a guitar player plays the notes. Now what he does is he puts, uh, he puts his fingers on the strings and uses the strings to create the notes. But he only has a limited amount um, of strings, so he can't really play every note in this um, chord uh, on the octaves, but rather can only play a few um, notes of the string. So we, uh, or I um, open up a, um, a picture here that uh, basically shows um, an, a, a chord how it's played on the uh, on the guitar and um, here's every string and you can see down here which notes um, the, um, the player will be playing by uh, doing this so let's uh, just um, play uh, yeah let's just um, draw those notes in here we have um, F sharp we have uh, B we have another F sharp and another B. Well, that's an octave too high. Uh, then we have a D and another F sharp. How does it sound? Well, it sounds like this. Sounds quite good, doesn't it? All right. Now for the next co uh, chord, which is F sharp, we will be we will be doing the exact same thing. We will be starting with F sharp, moving on to C sharp. Uh, the next one again is F sharp. Then we have A sharp, C sharp, and F sharp. But this doesn't sound believable because nobody can play all those strings at the same time. We now um, emulated that the player can only hit particular notes with the strings and not every uh, single note in the chord. The next thing, uh, thing we have to emulate is that the um, player is hitting uh, the notes um, once at a time. So how are we going to achieve that? Well, we are going to use Ableton's arpeggiator. Let's take a listen at what it does. It hits the notes one after another. That's good, but now he's not um, playing the strings open, but is stopping the, the note every time uh, he's playing a new one. We don't want that. So we have to tell Ableton that um, Ableton has to hold the note until it's being played again. And we are going to do this by choosing um, envelopes here in our MIDI clip and choosing the MIDI channel 64 here. And that corresponds to um, the MIDI um, the, the, uh, the MIDI uh, setting or rather uh, the, the envelope for, for, the con uh, for the hold pedal. And that just says to, to Ableton that it has to uh, hold down the notes or rather uh, keep um, keep uh, playing that note until it's being hit again. All right. Now uh, I just drew in this little uh, thingy here. So he stops all notes before he's playing the next chord. Um, so we don't get any uh, disharmonies and uh, we are going to let him stop again 
when he's done with the last chord. Now, how does it sound now? Sounds good, right? But there's one more problem. When he moves down with his hand and plucks the strings, he's only hitting each string once. We want him to stop after that. And uh, we achieve that by just using this repeat uh, knob here and turning it up to one. So he only repeats every string one time. Uh, but not, uh, no, he's not repeating every string one time. He's only playing the string one time. It's not repeating them. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? All right, now, it still kind of sounds a little bit too mechanical, too machiney. So, to resolve that, I'm going to choose the lower notes, change the, um, the velocity here a little bit. So it gives it the feel that he's maybe playing the first three notes a little harder than the other one. So it's, it isn't really the same. And then... But it really doesn't make that lot of a difference. So let's um, drop in a velocity effect here. And um, basically we have um, the, the capability with this effect um, to change the um, velocity data that comes from the MIDI clip. Now, uh, in a MIDI clip, you have uh, 128 different settings for how hard a string is played. Now, what we can introduce with this random knob here is that um, we can um, say to this effect, take range of, for example, 20 of those uh, units um, and choose random um, between, between the vicinity of the uh, velocity that comes in. For example, we take uh, the velocity of 40 that comes in and now uh, we can um, add or subtract uh, 10 or um, anything to 10 uh, from this uh, velocity setting in a random um, event. So maybe this 40 gets to 30A or 50 um, or 30 or 42. So it really uh, varies up the thing and makes it more mechanical, uh, not more, more mechanical, less mechanical, because um, it emulates how a player plays the strings. He's not going to hit every string with the exact same, same velocity, but he's going to make small uh, variations uh, on how hard he's going to hit each string and this is emulating that. Let's take a listen. Sounds good doesn't it? All right now the last trick um, we are going to do uh, just to make it sound a little bit nicer we are going to pan those uh, this guitar duplicate it and pan it left and right. Let's take a listen to how it sounds now. And we got a nice plucked guitar. The guy is slowly hitting each note. Sounds good. Now, this is the first sound we um, created. The only thing I did um, after that is add a little bit of reverb. That's it. Um, the second thing we created actually wasn't um, this uh, slow picking of each string, but uh, rather a um, strum. So uh, what's happening is, well, basically he's picking each note, but he's doing it very quickly when moving his hand down. So we have um, an option in this arpeggiator to um, not uh, use um, a, a synced mode where he hits the note uh, every eighth note. Um, but rather use a timing mode where he hits a note every, let's say, 45 milliseconds. Let's listen to that, how it sounds. I'm going to put it in the middle. That sounds like he's strumming it, uh, strumming across the, um, the, um, the strings. Let's uh, put this one on 45 as well. And this is what we created. Now we're going to keep the velocity effect because even when he's drumming, 
he's not going to hit each note with the same velocity. So this gives it this um, less mechanical, more organic feel to it. All right, and that's it. It's not much we did here. Um, I'm not going to go over effects and what you can do with those guitars, um, how to process them. You need to compress them, you need to EQ them. That's it, basically. Um, I'm not going to go over the reverb. It's just about this little technique that the arpeggiator and, and acoustic guitars work really well together. And I just wanted to share that with you. Um, if you uh, not only like those uh, acoustic guitars, but also like electric and stored guitars, I'm going to put an annotation on the screen here so you can check out another video made by me where I uh, go over a technique to make a really nice distorted um, guitar and emulate how most uh, electric uh, distorted guitars uh, and background guitars um, are being made in most uh, songs. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, thank you for wa watching. I hope you liked the video. And I wish you a nice day.